We were about 20 miles away and it was getting dark. The wind had dropped so I started my engine to get in quicker. It was not running right. I spent several hours trying to purge the injectors. It didn't work. Torfin kept on helming and it seemed like the gods wanted us to come in at dawn. And we did. So Torfin and I did it, man. We made it. Anchored. <laughs> safe. Feel Anchored. Safe. The engine quit on us just as we tried to come in here so we came in under sail here. Torfin was a real, real trooper, man. He didn't sleep and I said, man, you gotta, you gotta keep up and sailed in here and just under sail. And then we tried to start the engine just to push us into the acreage and then it died. And we're like, oh no, okay. <laughs> Right at the last minute, it's like, <laughs> Simone, right? Your engine's called Simone. Yeah, and we just had a rag of sail up, and we said, okay, let's just tighten that up and try to sail in here and tack up there. And and then I said, well, maybe I'll just tighten up one of these injectors or loosen it and so that the engine will give us just a little boost, you know, to get in the right spot and stuff. And when we just know it, Simone all of a sudden just purred, ran very beautifully <laughs> for the last five, five minutes of the trip, not even the last two minutes. <laughs> And we dropped anchor and floored the sails, and now we're just like <laughs> pooped, poop, but yet high on this adrenaline yeah, high. Yeah. Man. Miracles happen. Yes. And it happened, it happened to us, man. It was a crazy trip, man. That night, Torfin got a real feel for Mandelo. <laughs> The last day of Carnival, and a few days later, Torfin would continue his adventures. So Torfin's about to go to Sintantau. So Torfin, what were your first impressions of Cape Verde when we got here on Sunday morning, the last couple of days that you've been here? I mean, to summarize in one word, wow, you know? <laughs> but we came in at the crack of dawn, so it was amazing to sort of, you know, see the, the mountains they sort of got became revealed, you know, as we as we sailed in, and sailed in, you know, yeah. I, I stress, <laughs> yeah, uh, because of the broken motor. So and the Mandinga, amazing, Mandinga's amazing, you know. That was the first evening, and the, <laughs> there's this crazy, you know, big procession. You know, everyone's out parading down the streets with um, these crazy costumes, you know. Well, there goes Torfin. He's going to Saint Antal. Torfin would continue his adventures on Sentantau Island. And later, this is what he had to say, and I quote, Sentantau Cape Verde really took my breath away. The place is like some wild jazz fusion combining aspects of African and European culture and taking inspiration from the natural beauty of the place. Emerging from all this springs a new culture and a way of living, a uniquely Cape Verdean one. It is here that my two-wheel adventure will come to an end. The memories and experiences I have made through Europe and Africa by bike have been seriously epic, but my time on this island has stunned me. It has been a peek through a looking glass onto a potential interworldly future. So long, Africa. Until next time. This is Ted's shack in Salamanca, your favorite kite surf spot. My English friend Derek here had recently taken it over. I've been wanting to visit, so I took Wendy and her boy Clay there. I had fried moray eel, Cape Verde's fish and chips. Wendy and Clay there got burgers. Poor kid had lost his front baby teeth, but don't worry. Someday you'll have your mother's wonderful smile. Both of them, though, the desserts went down smooth. Derek sailed in from England a while back and stayed longer than expected. So you see, I'm not the only one. Katya, who used to work at the marina, brought Derek to see the place. He spiffed it up, Katya took over the cooking, and here we are. I 
As you can see, the beach is beautiful, as is Wendy. And to see the pure joy of her and her boy out here, out of the hood, it's just wow. Hugging the curves on that body, she bring the heat like wasabi. Promise not to test your heart, never. We just can't be kept apart. Yeah, yeah. Baby, you're the best by far. Always go the extra mile. Yeah. friend great friend like Peter who's lending me his uh, autopilot auto helm and his um, controller so that I can uh, go sailing with a Swiss guy who wants to do some miles with uh, another Swiss guy who has a Swiss sailing license so we just went over there to Peter's place and I need a belt and a gear for my thing it's all worn out and it's a pain in the ass to get here so until then he lent me his entire autopilot because his poor boat's demasted and he can't go anywhere and so he doesn't need it. So it's gonna work out just fine. So I just gotta put this in and let's keep our fingers crossed that it works. The continuing saga of getting things ready to go on Gatapam. Yesterday I tried just to turn over the motor, make sure that it's running good, make some hot water and uh, the ignition key right here was totally seized man seized 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 couldn't start the motor couldn't turn over the key it's whole ignition look at it and by chance the owner had an extra one but without the tumbler so what did I do I went to talk to my friend Jean who's an electrician and uh, said I don't need a tumbler, but I do need a key. So I fashioned a key. I made one. Here's the new ignition, right? Look, brand new. Huh? Never been used. So I put that in there because it was lacking the tumbler. So I made this. Goes in here. Boom. Back. Ding. Tink, tink, tink. And it works, man. Man, Piduk, man, did an awesome job on my uh, bathroom floor. It was all rotten and falling apart. And he did it fast and for an unbelievable price. Check it out. This is Piduk, man. He just did an amazing job on my uh, on my floor for my bathroom. It was a boom boom trabant nya nacho, nya kazadbon. And it by the the lily. <laughs> He's an awesome carpenter and man, I can't believe it that this is so nice. So, so nice. Uh -huh. Man, so thank you, thank you. Obrigada, Peru. Yeah, man, take good. Look at this. Awesome. Can't wait to put it in, man. Let's go, uh, let's go see. Amazing, what a great job. Thank you, Piduke. Obrigada, Piduke, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now I'm off on a mission. I'm hired as a skipper. 
Good morning, everyone. It's uh, about 7.30 in the morning. I left Mandelo at uh, 3 o'clock, calm conditions. And then all of a sudden here, just south of the island of um, Santa Luzia, as usual, 25 knots. And I had uh, only taken two reefs and was downstairs all of a sudden the boat just went Whew! So I just managed everything, took a third reef. Now everything's uh, tame. And uh, to head out to uh, Santiago Island. Why am I heading to Santiago Island? Well, because I got a job there. Thanks for coming aboard Gatapine Winded Voyage. This is our studios. You know, it's the good people on Patreon who are making this happen and keeping us afloat. Hope you'll join our community there. Uh, we've got a lot of cool extra perks this year, like live updates, news, photos, videos, and I've even taken a stab at writing some short stories which are not for general audiences on YouTube. Plus, our friend and patron Graham started a WhatsApp chat that he aptly called Gallopin's Cockpit. Guys from all over have joined, and we can talk, chat, uncensored, say whatever we want, and discuss anything. And it's this community that's contributing to the continuation of this Living Adventure series. Or you can watch for free on YouTube, just make sure to give us a like or dislike or leave a comment, and definitely subscribe. So thanks for coming along on Winded Voyage, man.